Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach, and I have been a professional family systems therapist and a trauma recovery therapist for many, many years. Um, this is one of a series of videos that I've uploaded to try and pass on to people like you what I've learned. This particular video is part of something called Lesson 4, which is a whole group of ideas about how to optimize your social relationships with kids and adults. This particular video focuses on a dynamic that is very frustrating for most of us. <clears throat> I'm going to give it the label power struggles. Uh, I suspect you have your own version of what that phrase means. A power struggle occurs between two people of any age, any gender, any nationality, any color, a power struggle occurs when one person insists, I'm right, you're wrong. And the other person says, no, 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 I'm right, you're wrong. <clears throat> Ever been in a dynamic like that? You know how it feels. Frequently, both people feel more and more frustrated. Their voices go up. They wind up accusing each other. They don't listen to each other. Uh, they have a lot of, there's a lot of symptoms that say, I'm in a power struggle. Do you remember the last time you were in such a struggle? Sometimes these are called fights. Sometimes it's called arguing. They're all related. Um, the alternative, by the way, to power struggles, fights, and arguments is win-win problem solving. If you don't know what that is, I urge you to study, when you can, Lesson 2 in my video set and or my nonprofit educational self-improvement website. Lesson 2 is about how to problem solve effectively. That's the alternative to power struggling. One thing I've noticed about people who get stuck in power struggles, and I have done so myself, I've been on both sides of the fence here. Typically, people who are focused on being right and making the other person wrong <clears throat> are burdened by being controlled by what I call a false self. If you don't know what that means, I invite you to study Lesson 1 in my videos and my website. If you <clears throat> frequently get caught in power struggles, it may be that you are the survivor of early childhood abandonment, neglect, and abuse, alias trauma. And one of the ways you have survived <clears throat> is to develop something that can be called a false self. False selves are often shame-based and fear-based. People who are shame-based, who basically don't feel very good about themselves, can overcompensate by trying to prove to themselves and other people, I'm right, I know what I'm talking about, I see things clearly, you don't. They try to put themselves one up. That helps them feel less ashamed at the time. Perversely, it causes them to lose self-esteem. In any event, um, be alert. If you find yourself in a power struggle, or you see two other people in a power struggle, Try out the idea that um, the other person, or both people, are not aware of bearing psychological wounds and being ruled by a very narrow vision, false self. Uh, if you can accept that idea, that promotes compassion, not antagonism and scorn. So with having said that, if you find yourself caught up in a power struggle, I'm right. No, you're wrong. Oh, yeah? Um, what can you do? What are some practical options you can do to avoid or unhook from a lose-lose power struggle? By the way, I say lose-lose because neither person in a typical power struggle gets their needs met. The opposite is problem-solving in which both people can get their needs met. That's the ideal. That's the other thing you can learn to do. So if you're in a power struggle, what can you do? There are several important things. 
the very first thing to do is check who's running my life right now. Is it my true self or is it a false self? If it's a false self, your primary a priority, I propose, is getting your true self back in charge of you. I'm not going to describe how to do that in this video, but if you look at my Lesson 1 videos, you'll find a very practical way called Parts Work, whereby you can free your true self to make your decisions and govern your actions. So that's the first thing you can do. I'm in a power struggle. Who's running my life? True self, false self. Other videos show you how to answer that question. Learn uh, in general, don't just wait for a power struggle, but in general, learn the seven communication skills that you'll find in lesson two in my free self-improvement information. Particularly, awareness of what's going on in you and between you and another person a skill called empathic listening, or listening with your heart, thanks to Stephen Covey. Assertion of your boundaries and opinions in a respectful way. And problem solving. Learn those skills. One of the things you can learn to be aware of that's crucial if you're in a power struggle is become aware, honestly, of your attitude towards the other person. There are three basic options. I see myself as better than you. I see us as co-equal people with equal dignity, even though we have differences. Or I see myself as one down to you. I'm inferior to you. Notice your attitude. This takes about four seconds. If you have a one-up attitude, that's a sign of being run by a false self. If you have a one-down attitude, I'm inferior to you, ditto, ditto. The best attitude to have is you and I, even though we have differences, we are people of equal worth and dignity. Your needs are just as important as mine if we're not in an emergency. So check your attitude the next time you're in a power struggle. Okay? <clears throat> Um, it may go without saying, but think to yourself, or even say out loud, I think we're in a power struggle right now. That's not an accusation. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a normal social reaction. But just admit it out loud. That will allow you to say, oh, okay, there are some things I want to remember to do. Check to see if my true self is in charge. Check to see what my attitude is, one up, one down, equal, equal. Uh, remember the communication skills of awareness and especially of empathic listening. If you don't know what that is, it's a special kind of listening. See my videos on lesson two. It'll show you how to do that. If you acknowledge that you're in a power struggle, one option you have is to simply acknowledge without guilt, without shame. You know, we see this, whatever the issue is, we see this differently. Let's just agree to disagree, okay? That's polar opposite of saying, I'm right and you're wrong. Let's just agree to disagree, right? And let's move on. That is a very powerful way of avoiding a power struggle. If you happen to be with a combative, grown, wounded child, someone who's psychologically wounded, they may not want to do that. They may love the excitement of combat. And they really may groove on, I want to fight with you. I'm going to argue with you. I love it. I, you know, I'm going to show you I'm right and you're wrong. Oh, it's fun to do that. Let's keep doing it. I won't quit. You ever run into a child or an adult who loves drama, loves combat? If you find yourself with a person like that, I propose as a professional therapist who studied relations for many, many years, what you can do is not argue, explain, get into a cycle of yes, but, try to prove them wrong. Don't even bother to do that because they can't hear you. They want combat. They don't want a solution. So they will not hear you or respond, even if you invite them quietly and respectfully. They, they won't do that. 
what can you do in that case? You can acknowledge to yourself, this person, I think, is a grown wounded child, is meaning they're burdened with some psychological wounds they didn't ask for, and they don't understand, and they don't know what to do about them. This person, in that sense, is really hindered, and they're still my equal. There are specific ways to communicate with a person who is wounded, psychologically wounded. I'm not going to go into them here. I have done so in other videos and in Lesson 4 in my website. I'm going to give you a link to an article that gives you specific ways to deal with a grown wounded child or a seriously psychologically wounded child. There is a specific way to relate to people like that. As far as power struggles go, if you acknowledge this person won't agree to disagree, they want to fight, I don't want to fight, um, what can I do? A very powerful option you have is to uh, decide, okay, I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to argue, I'm not going to persuade, I'm not going to explain, I'm not going to defend. Those will do no good. That guarantees both of us will lose. What I am going to do is just listen. So the other person says, um, you obviously don't understand the Democrats are really the only way to run this country. And you happen to be a Republican. And you say, well, I'm, I really disagree with that. Well, you're wrong. Uh, you know, it's stupid to be Republicans. Republicans are money-grabbing, whatever. Um, empathic listening would sound like, so it's your strong opinion that Democrats are really best suited to run our country. Period. It's not a question, it's a statement. You don't bring up a lot of verbiage, you don't bring up examples, you don't ask questions. You simply say back to the other person what you think they're saying. It does not mean you agree, underline, underline. Empathic listening simply says, I want to hear you. I see you as a person of dignity and worth. I simply want to hear your opinion. However, I'm not going to debate with you because it's pointless. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to try and convince you. And I will not join you in a waste of time to have the drama of fighting. Uh, we both lose if we do that, so I'm not going to do that. And what you'll find if you practice empathic listening, respectful empathic listening, with a mutually respectful attitude, that's an essential. If you do that, what you'll find is the other person gradually runs out of steam. They've got nothing to fight against. This is not a strategy. It's not a one-up. It's not a covert way of saying, I'm going to get you. <laughs> uh -uh. Because you will leak. Your face, your voice tone, your choice of words, your body language will leak. I'm really going to get you. I'm still fighting, but I'm going to fight in a different way. <laughs> it won't work. You have to be sincere and say, I'll just listen to you. Because if I do that, and the other person may re-emphasize their point of view, say, well, how, how, why did it take you so long to see that? And you say back, empathic listening would sound like, you're puzzled that it hasn't been more obvious to me. Notice the way I'm illustrating this. Empathic listening is very short. In your own words, you're not parroting the other person. You're not adding information or subtracting information. Sometimes this communication technique is called mirroring. Because in effect, just like a mirror, you just give back what you get. That's all. You'll find, if you're self-disciplined enough, and if your true self is running your show, that the other person eventually will realize you're not going to play the game, and they lose interest. They'll stop. Um, it would be best under those circumstances to not smile or say, well, I guess you ran out of steam, didn't you? Uh-uh. Don't use sarcasm. It's going to... It's uh, kerosene on the briquettes. Don't do it. So that is a powerful way of ending power struggles, if you find yourself in them. Check to see your true self is in charge. Remember the skills from Lesson 2, because there are seven communication skills. Check your attitude. 
If you have an equal, equal, mutual respect attitude, go ahead. If you don't, focus on freeing your true self. Because she or he is the one most apt to see your, quote, opponent um, as a co-equal, dignified person. Check your attitude. Acknowledge your inner power struggle without blame. It's a normal dynamic. Uh, assess the other person and see if you think they are carrying psychological wounds. If they are, um, review for yourself the different ways of communicating successfully with the wounded person. I'm about to give you a link to an article that shows you how to do that. <clears throat> and then put your own values aside <clears throat> and practice empathic listening. Briefly say back what you see and hear the other person doing. Then shut up. Be quiet. Watch, listen, see what they do. You will find that they will run out of steam. Because in effect, you're taking all the air out of their sails. And the power struggle will stop. One final option you have is, if the other person is open to personal growth, you can say, by the way, I noticed we just had a power struggle. Would you be interested in talking with me about doing something different that we both would value called problem solving? Would you be willing to discuss that with me? Be prepared for, no, who do you think you are? Some smarty pants? You don't think I know how to problem solve? Want to fight? <laughs> um, don't expect miracles here, but at least make the other person aware there is a win-win option in case they happen to be interested. A final recommendation I make to you here, especially if you are a parent or a grandparent, foster parent, a teacher, a coach. Um, if there are young people in your life, consider teaching them at their own age level what is a power struggle, what are useful ways of responding to a power struggle, and what are useful ways of not responding. Particularly, avoid the dynamic, I'm right, no, I'm right. Help your young people understand this as early as you can and model it for them. It's a priceless gift. Well, as I promised, here is a link to a free educational web article on how to deal with, how to relate to, a person who has significant psychological wounds. That's characteristic of people who delight in repeatedly getting into power struggles. So here's the link. Um, you can also find a video that summarizes what's on the link in Lesson 4, my collection of Lesson 4 videos. I'm glad to have feedback on this video, on any other videos in my series, and on any part of my nonprofit, ad-free self-improvement website at S f help h e l p dot o r g that website is called break the cycle the cycle of inherited psychological wounds and ignorance i hope you find this video thought provoking more so i hope you find it useful try it out see what happens if you think about it let me know thanks for watching